in each other, that there are very different things you do that influence the state that you're in. I thought he'd thank you for an F I and said, I have a heavy heart. We didn't do that in class, or you start to think, oh, I wonder how I can work with that. Anyway, you may or may not get that on Tuesday. Um, <laughs> okay, so you've now made some observations, you've sensed the difference in those two states. It's useful to be able to choose to access a focal state when you want it. When you've got a task that requires you to, to do something, then to be able to think, okay, how do I find that place that gives me my ground, usually, gives me access to my memories, to my ideas, to what I know, to my creativity, to my capacity to pay attention to somebody else and the world. So your next task is to help each other to construct and access that state. Now, you've seen what they look like when they do that. You've got some sense of where in their body might be significant. So you can help by asking questions, particularly open-ended questions that people go into inside the search for the answer to find things in themselves. You can maybe use a little bit of touch to help draw attention to subtle differences and possibilities. But before you begin, it's always useful to connect the state to something. Now, some people like to, to use triggers to bring back particular useful states. It could be something that you do. It could be, it could be a gesture that you make. And if it happens to be the gesture that you automatically do when you get anxious, that would be better still. Because what's going to come back next time you do it? What you're about to attach to it. But it might be that you tweak your ear, it might be that you punch your fist. But maybe here it's a word or an image. So some people like to associate a state with, with something from nature. So do you think you know, rock in the river, do you think stream flowing around, do you think on a tree? What is the image that kind of encapsulates that state for you? Or do you think, you know, of an animal? Are you a panther? Are you cheeky monkey? Uh, obviously not my one. <laughs> <laughs> You know, are you a lizard just basking in the sun? What, what is the, the creature, the image, the word, the sensation, or combination of those that will be useful to attach to this, this state? So here's how the process goes. Two of you will assist with questions, with touch if you think it's appropriate. Your, your third colleague to access the state and you can ask the person when they feel like they've really got it strongly, then they can attach their, their trigger words or, or actions or symbols to that. Okay? Um, well, that's, that's getting to the next level of complexity. Let's build the state first. Um, then maybe maybe later you can practice going in and out of it. There'll be plenty of time over the next few days actually to practice going in and out of it. We'll remind you periodically when you go to practice with each other, just to take a moment to access that state as you begin to, to engage with other people. Um, we'll see if there are any other appropriate times that remind you to. Okay. Thank you. All right. Um, we have to email so you just ask someone to remember uh, a time when that felt okay. That was pretty powerful, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, so what, what you know, it was very potent. Yep. Why do anything more? I'm just saying, what else? Well, that may be enough. Or can we answer? Can we can we ask them to sort of elaborate? 
So when you feel like that, what do you notice about your breath? What's your sensation of your skeleton in relation to the ground? Where's your attention at the moment? How big is your field of vision? Um, some of those sorts of qualities to, to help kind of cognitively, if we, cognitively, if we need to rebuild it for ourselves at any stage, but also to really enhance the sensation in the moment. Because I can sort of remember a time and think about it over there, but that's not necessarily embodied. Mm -hmm. And yep. in the moment, if you're totally disconnected from that state, it could be really difficult to remember the memory of what well, that's right. And, and if I'm busy trying to tell you about the state, it, yeah, I may not be experiencing it at the moment. Yep. So again, the words, the answers to your questions are not important. It's looking for what effect does it have on the head. Okay. And then the mannerisms <coughs> or meanings or whatever to attach to <coughs> that state are uh, ideas for the big ones. The, the things you do when you feel it. Something that will be that, that you can remember to do. So, for example, when I learnt about building a present presentation state, my gesture was to make a fist and I can feel the kind of the tonus. And we talked about that mm. early, earlier this morning, that there needs to be sort of a level of activity. Now, believe it or not, my habitual state used to be <laughs> kind of pretty low tone. And, you know, trying to present to a group from there it's not really dynamic or engaging. So for me, actually to feel a little bit of tone is to walk briskly around for a little while to access the, you know, the memories and the images and that sort of thing, help to wake me up a little bit, bring me a little bit more into the world. Um, so that, that was useful for me. Now, I, I don't need to do that anymore, the context. Whoops, there we are again, here it comes, um, let's play. So um, I have noticed that there are other contexts where I have kind of habitual gestures that I think, oh, why am I doing that? You know, that's, that's becoming associated with a, a slightly different state. Can you see it? Can you hear it? It's just popped in. Mm. Um, it's there. Now, Elizabeth, you were saying something, you, you tend to hold your hand still, or somebody observed that when you were in your less resourceful state. Now, if that's something you're going to do automatically, I mean, some people, you know, play with their their jewellery or their, you know, they've got things they do when they're less comfortable. If you can build on a whole new response to something that's already there, then it's going to be automatically evoked for you. No. Before you before you before you start, think about what you your trigger is going to be. Whether you want an image, and you can help each other work that out. Because as helpers, you'll be observing where does it start to evoke the state. You know, if I say, oh, well, I think I think my image, I'd like to be um, a lion. Is that going to work for me? <laughs> Rah. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, you can help each other. Find a trigger or you know, images, words, whatever. Don't don't this take too long. Just just a few minutes, you can you can go away and continue to build on this for the rest of your life. But something to, to hang on to for the moment that that will be useful. And then help them build it, capture it, stay in it for a moment, and then move on to the next person. So I'll give you maybe five minutes each so that in 15 minutes we'll have a room full of ready to potentiate people. 